just takes a second. Yep, we are now live. Uh, thanks, Judy. Um, welcome, everybody. Uh, we just wait a minute or two as people log on. Um, but welcome to the business broadcast. Um, Judy, um, yeah, so this is our first live one with you today. So it's lovely to see you. It's great Had to a be great here. summer. Yeah, it's you, been fantastic. Thank yeah, you, you seem to have a glow. I'm not sure if it's the lighting <laughs> or just from the summer. Yeah, it's been great. Some nice rest. I'm Excellent. ready to support lots of people throughout the autumn. And Excellent. Some of the challenging months that many people find as we uh, go into this transition time. So thank you. It's great to be here. Yeah, and there's lots of transition, different things affecting people in the next few months. So this today will hopefully give a few techniques to really help them. So just wait another minute for people to go in and I'll introduce you properly and go through what we're talking about today. Um, but yes, yeah, so Judy, so so uh, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us because I've been I've been trying to get hold of you. But uh, <laughs> for a few weeks on this, you know, for because well, I, I knew that this would be a really good session and really useful to all those business owners who, just under normal circumstances, have usually got loads of stresses and strains. But certainly over the last eighteen months, you know, they've had, oh uh, goodness knows what to have to deal with, even more than anything. So um, I know that you help so many businesses in lots of different ways. Um, so today we are talking about the science of worrying less to achieve more. That's that's just sounds amazing. So what, what does that mean, Judy? What, what's the basis of that? So the basis of that comes down to there's lots of different ways to look at it. I could bamboozle you with science, I'll throw some at it, or I could start off with an old proverb um, and I'm going to start with a story. Um, there's a really lovely story and I've actually seen lots of them going around at the moment um, about we all have two wolves within us. We have a wolf um, of hope and love and we have a wolf of despair and worry. And we can choose which wolf we feed with our thoughts. And depending on which wolf we feed, it depends how our life will be. It depends what we will achieve. And worry is the wolf of despair and worry. And if we choose to only focus on that, that is the world that we will create. And that's certainly not a world we want for a world for us to be happy in. It's not a world we want for our businesses. Um, it's very easy in a business context to think, well, you know, hope and love and light, that's all, you know, for home time, that's all hippie stuff. Um, that's when I relax with a glass of wine at the end of a long week. Well, worrying less can actually help you achieve more. Now, that's not to say don't plan. <laughs> that's not to say to be conscious of actually contingency planning is very useful. But the sense of playfulness, the sense of hope, the sense of optimism that comes from being able to put your worries to one side and think creatively is actually how we problem solve some of our biggest challenges. Some of the things that we've faced as businesses over the past eight months that we never imagined we would have to face as individuals as collectives and worrying about it um, it was something that is very very natural we forget that worry is a natural physical reaction but what's important is to notice that reaction and use different tools to let some of that go uh, we then if we forget that worry is a natural physical reaction, what tends to happen is, is we then get, beat ourselves up for worrying, beat ourselves up for taking our time away. Oh, I can't focus on this yeah, job. Worry I about worrying. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And we all know people who do that or times that we've experienced that in ourselves. Um, and it can become this real anxiety loop. Um, and I teach people ways to break that, ways of businesses to observe, 
well, what's happening in my business and what's happening and how do we start to open a line of communication about these challenges? How do we start to do that? And what really shocked me, having um, worked in both communications and meditation and mindfulness for um, communications for over 25 years and meditation for 15, um, I was really shocked that it took a global pandemic to get HR and comms to talk to each other um, and it really was that simple in I would say three quarters of businesses I did a big piece of research last year about how businesses were feeling about well-being about the pandemic and their worries and concerns and what was their priorities and while there are maybe a quarter of businesses that had started to realize actually thinking about our well-being our mindset how we approach things where we're putting our attention um, it makes a big difference to how successful we can be um, other businesses were saying yeah well we still don't know how we're going to fit this into our schedule how we're going to do this um, and quite frightening the the numbers of businesses who just not quite ready to embrace yeah. that but things are changing um, absolutely is it is definitely it's definitely much more mainstream now isn't it yeah. so so because you do we you know I've you know obviously I speak to hundreds of business owners and you know some can become paralyzed by stress and fear yeah. and worry um, but you know and using some of your techniques um, you know really really helps them um, and you know these things are sometimes show you know communicated under different names um but you know lots of them have it in the same thing because you have there's lots of people that have different positivity type yeah. ones i know there's loads of different positivity workshops out there you know we're going we're talking today more as in to show that it's stress relieving and that by by thinking a different way um yeah. and you know it's just it's just so yeah it's, it's just um it's just it's very it's it's heartening that now more people are getting it and you know hopefully it will be really help those business owners and their businesses to get through it so just quickly before we go on to even more detail um just reminder um we really love to hear from you that are watching live uh, obviously you could be watching this later on in the afternoon on linkedin live or um or on youtube uh, click and subscribe on YouTube uh, but uh, if you are watching live you're you sitting down there with your sandwich or your cup of tea do say hello um, I know Bethan's already said hello hi, hi. Um, but I know there's a few other there's I know there's definitely quite a lot of people watching today live um, so do don't be shy say hello share your experiences um, Judy's here to ask, answer any questions, you know, whether it's about something left field or, or, or one of the specific uh, techniques that she talks about today. Um, so, yeah, I mean, we've already touched on a bit, but, but just um, put a bit more into context how meditation is uh, related to business. Yes, uh, I think uh, meditation Hello. has become a more common word through the pandemic and people have started to realize that how you approach what you think in your mind affects <laughs> what happens in your work not just your home life um, and there is started to be a shift I am a meditation teacher so I apply techniques from mindfulness approaches and some more woo-woo <laughs> approaches which work with our energy which work with with, uh, different ways of focusing. I love the way so many different people are embracing these techniques. Essentially, meditation is a way of training your mind. Um, to work with a meditation teacher or coach is a bit like working with a PT, um, you know, a physical fitness trainer for your body. So you may be able to motivate yourself and go to the gym or go running and have your own way of looking after your body physically or you may kind of get I need a bit of help I need a class that's going to motivate me to do the exercise I need to do I need to run with a friend I need to actually work with a PT because I've got some stubborn 
um, lockdown belly fat, <laughs> for example, that I need to learn some different techniques and some different ways of exercising. Meditation is the same, but it's all about the mind. It's about exercises you can do that help your mind to focus, that help you to worry less that help you to achieve more. It helps you to develop a strength and a resilience through looking where you are putting your attention. Some people say, well, surely it's just sitting down quietly and, and just being in the silence of your body. That is one very extreme way to meditate, but you can also meditate while making a cup of tea, while um, sipping your tea, actually stepping away to make a cuppa and be really present with everything that you're doing, noticing the kettle, smelling the tea or the coffee, noticing the warmth of the mug. Most times you'll be making a cup of tea and you'll be on autopilot. You'll be thinking, you'll be going through your to-do list. You'll be thinking what's next. You'll be replaying a conversation thinking, oh, I'm really worried about that meeting coming up or that task I've got to do. What if you could be really present to what you were doing? It sounds silly, it sounds easy, but it's incredibly powerful. And just thinking of it in a work context, if you think about a tricky email you've got to send, if you could give all of your attention to that email rather than thinking about the other conversation you had with the person at the end of the line, the last Zoom call, the last correspondence, the other bits and pieces you have to do, what's happening with your family, what's happening with friends, what somebody posted on social media. If you could just focus on that email without all of those other thoughts, surely well, it's proven <laughs> that that email would be much quicker to do and you'd feel much happier about it. Um, and that's essentially what meditation is teaching us. It's teaching us to be able to focus our attention where we need to, um, to let worry not consume us. But also, and this is slightly different to the power of positivity, to notice uncomfortable feelings. Um, and to many accept they're normal. Yeah. Accept them normal. It is Absolutely. normal to have those because ho as long as then you do something with them, put them in sun, it's yeah. normal. Yes. And and to notice we're really bad as a society at noticing our mistakes. In business, how great is it to make a mistake and learn from it? We oh, know, you know a learning culture in a, in a business is such a thriving yeah. and exciting place to be. Yeah. And most of us all have had experiences of being in more toxic workplaces where mistakes are unacceptable. You know, I've worked for a long time in communication as a young junior executive. I actually got fired for making a typo. Now, I know that that's important. However, in context, <laughs> that's why I don't work in that particular industry <laughs> anymore, but I still use some of those principles. Yes, it's important. And yeah, I know there may be some grammar junkies out there who are like spelling and grammar. It's critical. Yeah, it's and not a sackable important. offense. <laughs> but learn from yeah, it. it there is yeah. a balance that we all can learn from our mistakes. Mm. Uh, I'm taking very extreme examples. No, but, uh, but absolutely, actually absolutely. being able to sit um, with those feelings and learn from it. And everybody's got a grief story from this um, challenging time that we've gone through. Um, and again, grief is something that we are collectively processing in a very different way um, and whatever your grief story is that grief is something that we need to feel and acknowledge and notice that we don't feel great all of the time however we can still do great work when we're having a bad day if we're able to focus and able to actually acknowledge actually I need to be with this for a moment and then I'll be more productive if I can Absolutely. just allow myself a bit of a breather. Yeah, a couple of things. So, I mean, I completely concur. To be honest, for our business, we've learned more when we've lost a pitch or 
sadly lost a client or lost an employee there's that's been much more dramatic and 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 changes made due to those things obviously you don't want those things to happen but at least as long the you know, positive things come out there's a, we've already getting in a few oh, questions and comments as well which is lovely questions, which so, is so it's Siobhan I mean she's she really she loves her meditation I know she does and she it really helps her she does that daily and and she's just saying, saying about it. it's a great to good to see uh, more people taking it on board which is great um, and you know lots of people are taking that in daily whether it's in the form of you know meditating while they're walking you know there's lots of different things I, I mean I like to go out and have my daily walk to to have that quiet time um uh, Nigel, he's got a question, so don't be, don't worry if you don't want to answer all of this now, because I know we've got a lot to cover over the next fifteen. But, but this is um, interesting. You said the end of so this is, you know, this is happening end yeah. of this month, end of furlough and government support. You know, and even if there is any more restrictions, or whatever, uh, you know, I wouldn't hold my breath for any more support so you know because we have we have had a lot already um it will cause a lot of concern for business owners what would be your top three tips what's pressure what are yeah. the top three because there's just so many uh for business owners for in stressful situations do you want to have a bash at that, that, that yes one, i'm really happy to have a go that's a really challenging but brilliant question so thank you nigel for for raising that and there's there's always something to worry about within your business this is a particular crunch point um, but I invite you to recognize that this happens there is a cycle albeit extreme because of the pandemic that will challenge your business so you need to be able to get that perspective I always say the first thing is to stop and breathe <laughs> to take yourself away from the worry of that that particular situation but just breathing taking a few deep breaths um, a really lovely technique is to notice um, you know, where you're putting your attention by breathing in through your nose so breathe into your nose and then close one nostril and take a do breath it, everyone out there do this now <laughs> and out yeah. and now close the other nostril take a breath in and out notice how now that very very quickly that tiny technique starts to balance the different hemispheres because you're shooting brain uh, breath to one part of the brain and then the other you'll notice um depending on what's going on for you generally 80 percent of people will find that one nostril is easier to breathe through so nikki which nostril was easier to breathe through are you feeling quite balanced oh it was it was the the second one was um so that was my right side was the easiest today the right side is is the easiest so uh, that that means your left brain which makes sense your logical thinking brain is more in tune is more fired up than your creative playful part of your brain and most of us and particularly Nigel's situation left brain is going to be fully engaged with that situation so first thing to do is you can notice okay so take a few breaths for that side of your body so consciously push yourself to breathe through the other nostril um, so you can try that in your own time and that is pushing before you even start to do a playful technique or some writing or going out and playing outside or going for a run or something that takes your mind off things you know, it's it's pushing the breath to that side of your brain so you can simply do that wow. it starts to release a possibility of a different way of looking at things um being aware of it can make you think okay so i'm looking at this too logically i need to install some creativity so you may kind of go okay well maybe as a team we need to yeah all get together and share ideas you know have have a good old-fashioned old scribble all over post-it notes and 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 flip charts if you're together you can do that there's lots of different technology where you can do those kind of things online you can still 
we'll structure a, a meeting and let's get our creative juices flowing. Have we asked the team, you know, different ways? Have we truly explored everything? You know, have we relied on furlough and government support so we haven't looked at alternative solutions? There were some great stories at the start of lockdown of businesses reinventing themselves, you know, an alcohol company in America that's now making hand sanitizer because it's let's just see where the market opportunity is. Have you done that within your business? And and recognizing that each of these challenges is an opportunity to rethink. I have found with my business that every change, every lockdown, every release of lockdown, every change changed people's attitudes to anxiety, caused a different wave of worry and it caused a difference some people were really happy and desperate to meet up face to face so how could that be managed safely and securely some people really just wanted a different level of online support so I've had to constantly reinvent and reshape the way I work um, so yeah sim simple breath techniques so hopefully that that Excellent. gives you a couple of ideas think creatively um, and communicate. Um, so hopefully that's you know, three tips that will Excellent. help you. Nigel. Check There's with loads Nigel. more <laughs> I, I can Paris share. With those. Um, I'm really, really happy to give you other ideas and do, do connect um, and I can share more in depth ideas. Um, so uh, where, where, for those that are out there and they're thinking, well, yeah, it's all very well. I understand a bit about meditation's good but i just really can't find the time yeah what would you say to those people that are saying they can't find the time well first of all <laughs> i would remind them of of the uh, the saying that goes around and i can't remember uh, if it was dalai lama or or, or some somebody else who uh, who who said it but it's if if you have if you want to be focused, meditate for 20 minutes a day. If you don't have time, you need to meditate for 40, uh, which is quite <laughs> frightening, but it's showing you the level of, if you don't have the time, your brain is going to be foggy. Um, yeah. I'm gonna give you a couple of really easy techniques. So one is to remember to stand up. Oh. I'm actually not going to stand up um, <laughs> because I'm in the loft today, as you may be able I to bump see. Your head. <laughs> and um, uh, I'd have to fiddle, fiddle about. But actually, when's the last time you stood up? You know, and just you can do it if you don't have space to stand up. Just straighten your posture. Notice, oh gosh, I've been sat down and my shoulders have slumped. My spine's curved actually lift your head up you see i've come out of the screen already <laughs> just by lifting myself yeah. up and that tiny shift in your posture is a little mini meditation a little focus of your attention when your body is telling you and you suddenly notice oh actually i haven't shifted or i feel awkward when you get up to make a cup of tea when you get up to use the loo notice your back Hopefully somewhere in your office, wherever you are based, you've got a flat wall. Go and stand against that wall and notice what's happened to your spine. Notice where you're curving. Notice your posture and push your spine straighter. You may find you've tilted your pelvis forward. Um, it's a very common thing for many of us to do. We tilt our pelvis back. Suddenly we look at least an inch thinner um, and... <laughs> And all we've done is straighten our spine. We've become conscious of our bodies again. So that's a really, really easy thing to do. Another thing I really like, and it's quite strange, um, but really quick, when you get up, get up really slowly. So imagine... What, it, what do you mean, first thing in the morning or when you're getting up from your when, chair? When you're getting up from a chair. Okay. So, um, right. yeah, so get so, up slowly. From, well, yeah, I do you have to be here because I can fall off this chair. So, yes, <laughs> get up slowly, <laughs> slowly. Consciously yeah. kind of think, okay, I'm going to get up as slowly as I can. I'm going to become really conscious. I suddenly notice, oh, even though I'm trying to be good with my posture, I've crossed my feet. Oh, I'm I, always doing that. 
yeah. can I, you know, uncross my feet, place my feet down, notice that feeling, that awareness in my feet, suddenly bring my awareness to my ankles and my legs and then stand up. You suddenly feel, you can feel quite elderly <laughs> when you do it. You can suddenly notice aches and pains that you mm -hmm. don't notice when you get up quickly. But again, you become out of your mind um, and your worries in your head and much more conscious of your body. Um, and it's really simple to do. There's no closing your eyes and chanting on. Um, it's just being really present in your body. Well, that, that's why people often notice aches and pains at night, isn't it? Because that's when they're lying still in that, whereas yeah. they've actually had it all during the day. Yeah. They just weren't conscious they of it. They just haven't noticed. Now, you can shift your attention away from that. Breathing is a really powerful thing to do. So notice your breath. So take a moment and notice how you're breathing. Yeah, is your breath quite shallow? And can you encourage your breath to be a little bit deeper? breathing into your diaphragm. Can you imagine breathing into your belly? So placing one hand where you feel the breath and one hand on your belly and trying to push that hand on your belly up and down. Just by breathing, feeling a sense of as you breathe in, your hand and your belly rises. And as you breathe out, your belly falls towards your spine. And it takes a little while to master. It took me about 20 minutes the first time I did it. I think I'd rather do this one standing up. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you get more rolls yeah. when you're sitting down. <laughs> get all self-conscious. Yeah. But again, we just notice it's, it's a little self-hug, some of these. Yeah. It's also, again, being really aware and noticing that tension just through our breath. And it's consciously shifting your breath really easy to do and one I really like is to focus your attention on something other than, than the screen so take yeah. a look now away so look yeah. at the window a picture try and look at least two meters away now some of our home offices don't allow yeah. that space that's why I've got roses planted just outside my window so I can Brilliant. I keep and, checking on them and check on so it's really good for your eyesight yeah. If nothing else, um, but focus and then really let your attention go onto that object and then become more interested. So if you're looking at your roses, instead of looking at the whole of the roses, look at the top of one particular rose and really let that capture your focus and attention. Notice how your mind is distracted and gently encourage it to focus on the rose. Then a really interesting thing to do is to focus on the rose and imagine you're putting up blinkers and then gently take off your blinkers to the left, focusing on that rose and taking in everything to the left with your peripheral vision, remembering to take in you. Then doing the same with the right, focusing on the rose, taking in everything to the right with your peripheral vision sounds strange but try and do this now and you'll notice things you'll suddenly go oh I didn't realize I'd left that over there I didn't realize oh oh I need to and you'll yeah. pick up things that you were not aware of simply through focusing uh, that technique's been used a lot by the Olympians uh, the British cycling team used that technique to become to be able to be really focused yet aware of what's happening around them so they're not blinkered they are using all their vision but they are focused so oh fantastic really, really this is just so them. many really good tips judy so, so that everyone because i mean there's you know I, i'm guarantee you, everybody that's watching this will be thinking right yes i need to do this and i want to have more ideas on how to put it into practice how, how can they get hold of you judy um you're on you're in linkedin you're on instagram is that is that your preferred for people to find you i'm very open to communication being a, a communications professional at heart um so um instagram facebook LinkedIn, they're all great. Um, I haven't written down my surname, which is very yeah. silly. 
<laughs> Judy Clawton, um, which I'll spell out for you in in the comments, so so people can find it. There's not many Clawtons; it's a it's a confusing surname. Balancetime.co.uk is the website. Um, it's easy to find Balance Time on Facebook, Instagram. I'm actually Hello Balance Time. Um, yes. So um, find me, reach out, get in touch. I share different things. So Instagram and Facebook have a lot of daily tips. Um, I have a group that people join where as well as tips, people share challenges. Right, I've been meditating for a while and this has come up or this has been a challenge. Um, so different things available kind of across the different communities. LinkedIn has more of a business focus um, and part of what I do, I, I run a hub for people to get together and discuss challenges in the in well-being and actually getting this to be something that your team embraces so I have a well-being leaders club where we get together once a month and I'd love to welcome more people to to join that and and realize the bond that comes from sharing ideas from other people going through similar challenges um, with some really positive techniques and, and ideas we had one with two people sharing strategy documents back in June which was great it's like I need to do a strategy I need to do this and uh, I shared about four different strategy documents that I put together and they were sharing it's like great <laughs> I've spent an hour of my time and I've, I've got a whole new strategy and I could have just procrastinated on my own so um, so that, all oh, things like that thank you so for thank you so much for your time today Judy I already feel taller um, <laughs> <laughs> just from those few little breaths and things and stretching but that's brilliant thank you so much please do get in touch with Judy she's just got so that's just a taster small yeah. little taster um she's got so much more that you can she delve into that's really beneficial for you and your team um so do get hold of judy and and find out more um but anyway thank you very much everyone that's been watching live um but also thank you if you're thank watching you. on catch up um join me again next week uh again on friday at 12 30 for another business broadcast um it was going to be the health and safety, but it's that one's being moved. So I'm just jiggling around to see which of the ones coming up. But I can tell you, with the whole mix of things coming up, we've got one on um, video advertising, health and safety, cybersecurity, insurance. Um, or, or, well, I think we've, there's another couple to, as well, which I can't think offhand. But it's lots coming up. We're fully booked up until the end of October with different really exciting different guests different guests every week so do join us um we've also got a leadership we're back to full webinars as well this month so we've got a full leadership um uh webinar with the lovely heather townsend um and i will be booking uh sure, well sending out invitations etc for that tomorrow so do watch out for that but anyway in the meantime thank you so much judy um everyone hope have a lovely friday afternoon and a good weekend and cheerio Ooh, Thank you. Take care. <laughs> Have a great weekend.